Well, hello guys and gals, it's me, your old buddy, Mr. Moose. Back to do a little trucking with you, and this time we are in the USA. Yeah, we've put Europe behind us. We are now in American Truck Simulator. And by now, honestly, you've probably seen a live stream with me, or you've seen some live stream archive. This video today is going to focus on uh, the G27 and controlling your steering and your shifting uh, in American Truck Simulator. I've gotten several requests from folks on to do a video on how to set up the G27. So we're gonna walk through that today and get it all set up. Uh, please be aware that I'm doing the G27 because the G27 is what I own. Uh, if you own a G28 or any other type of wheel, some of the information be, may be useful to you, but again, this pertains to the G27. So if you have a SciTech farm sim wheel, some of the info is going to be useful a lot of it's not because you've got you don't have a shifter so uh anyways this is for g27 with the side console shifter okay um to start off with the first thing you're going to need to do for the g27 is obviously download the logitech profiler a lot of people don't use this but it's a very useful program it allows you to set up a profile for each individual game that you play and you can make minor adjustments to how you use the force feedback and such so we want to get the profiler we want to install it on our, our computer you can get the profiler from Logitech's website and their support page and install it put it on your computer and then we will set up a profile for American Truck Sims so let's uh, jump over to my desktop once you've installed the Logitech profiler and you've launched it it's gonna come up and look something like this uh, you'll select the device that you want, the G27 Racing Wheel, and you'll see all the buttons and everything laid out. All we really need to do is create a profile for American Truck Sim. So we'll go to Profile New, and I'm just going to call this one ATS. Uh, then I'll browse my computer for the location of ATS. Now that is going to be located under Program Files 86, uh, Program Files x86. You'll scroll down to where it says Steam. Then you'll go to Steam Apps, Common, American Truck Simulator, and go to Bin. Under Bin, you'll have Win X64, and there's American Trucks. You'll say Open. And that'll load that in so that you can launch the game straight from there. You can select the little icon for American Truck Sim, and you'll have that on there. So now, You'll have the game selected. Whenever you want to select, you'll select American Truck Sim. And when you're ready to play the game, all you'll have to do is press that button to go. Now the next thing that we want to do is we want to edit specific game settings. This will come in here. This will allow us to config the Logitech profiler for what we want to do for the game. Now. For American Truck Sim, I'm using specific force feedback device settings and I'm leaving everything at 100% here. I am not using center spring, I'm letting the game do that. I am using specific wheel steering settings and report combined pedals up to 900 degrees of steering. This adjusts how much steer you want into the steering wheel. If you set it for only like 400, you're only going to move the steering wheel just 400 degrees. That means the least little bit of adjustment you make with the steering wheel becomes a, ma a big time uh, movement on the game. So by going to full 900 degrees, one the turning of the wheel equals the same turn on the screen so set it to 900 degrees then check use games uh, special game settings and then also allow game to adjust settings and by doing that we can adjust the force feedback within the game we we'll click OK that's good and now that this profile is set anytime that we come into the uh, Logitech profiler before we launch the game we go ahead and select ATS and then when we click play ATS it's going to actually go in, watch Euro Truck, I mean, uh, American Truck Sim for us, and it will pull in those profile settings for us. Now that we have a profile complete, we've started the game from the Logitech Profiler, here we are. Now, we are going to 
set this up from an existing program but if you do a new profile uh, it'll be a little bit uh, almost the same the only difference is if you have an existing profile up already you want to add the G27 and you go to options controls and the input wizard simplest way to do this it's going to detect all of your controllers that you have hooked to your con computer and typically it's going to ask you you know do you want to use this one do you want to use this one do you want to use this one uh, it depends on what you want to use uh, some of it will ask you if you want to use your uh, you know your um, uh, game pad or something like that to control your mouse movement so you, for your camera and stuff like that it's up to you um, but you know basically get your G27 set up and ready to go if you are setting up a new profile you're gonna set up your profile put your name picture truck logo all that other good stuff and when you hit enter this is the first screen you're gonna come to we're gonna hit controllers and it's gonna ask us how we want to shift gears what kind of gearbox do you want to use do you want to use the simple automatic where you just press forward and press back to break in reverse uh, you know, if you want to use an automatic transmission, that's up to you. Um, if you are, um, if you're using an eight shifter, you're definitely not going to want to do that. Uh, sequential, basically you use a button to go up and down through the gears. Um, that's great if you're on a game pad or something, but for us, for the G27 and the side console, we want to use the eight shifter. So we'll select the eight shifter. And then it's going to talk to us about the gear pattern we want to use, or our eight shifter layout. Now there are three basic layouts uh, in American Truck Sim, and also these are pretty much the same as what they were in Euro Truck. So if you look at the top, you have what is a, a range pattern. A range pattern, if you think about it, if you have 13 speed transmission, that gives you a reverse gear and 12 forward gears. Well, on a shifter, you've only got six positions that you can use. So how do you get all of those gears? Well, you have to use a range button. So what that means is basically, think of it as a cake that's layered. The bottom layer of the cake is your first set of gears. One, two, three, four, five, six, and reverse. That's this pattern over here. The second layer or the second floor of a house or whatever else like that contains your second set of gears, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 in reverse. So what you do is to change from the bottom layer to the top layer, you use a button or a range button. You push that button and it tells the computer, okay, I'm done using the bottom set of gears. Let's go to the top set of the gears. So we go from the first layer for our low gears one two three four five and six and when we want to go to the higher gears for more speed we push the button we go up to the second level which is seven eight nine and we use the exact same shifting pattern all over again we're using a six gear pattern with the range splitter is a little bit different splitter keeps everything on one layer okay so instead of going six gears and then jumping up to the next six gears we're going to keep everything on one level and we're going to shift uh, our gears with the same we're going to use another button called a splitter button and the way that function is when I put my gear into first position here and we'll call that first position I'm in first gear to go to second gear instead of moving the physically moving the lever all I do is push in my clutch, push a button, let the clutch out, and now I'm in second gear. To go to third, it's a little more complicated. Third, I've got to push in my splitter button to tell the computer to drop back down to, to the range for third, and then I move the fork or the shifter down to third. And now I'm in third gear to go to fourth, I hit the splitter button again. And that just automatically shifts me to fourth when I push in the clutch and let out on the clutch. So that's the difference in splitter and range. Where's a range, I run all the way through the gears, I press the range button, then I run all the way through the gears again. With a splitter, every time I go to an odd gear, I move the, the physical gear shift lever. And every time I want to go to an even gear, I just press a button and engage the clutch and disengage the clutch. So everything stays on one plane. You don't have to go if you think of it that way. The last is a combination of which it's called a range and splitter. 
with a 13 speed transmission uh, you use a certain number of gears and then if you go up to an 18 that's where a range splitter almost becomes mandatory because you've got more gears than you do uh, slots on your on, on your gear shift so the way a range splitter works it only utilizes four shifting positions on your your gear shift uh, it uses the first four and then reverse is pushed down and all the way to the right and down in what is known as sixth position. So the way the range works, it's a combination of the two. Your first gear, and we're going to look here at the little window here, your first gear is all the way to the left and up. And then your second gear is using the splitter, just like we did on this diagram here. We go to second gear by just pushing our splitter button. For third gear, we press the splitter button and actually move the gear slift lever down to the third position. So this diagram here is representing the splitter window that we've done here. So basically our first layer has all of our low gears, one through six, and instead of being laid out where I go shift, 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 shift all the way across in each position, I have two gears in each slot. First and second are in all the way to the, you know, left and up. Third and fourth are left and down. Fifth and sixth are in the center position and up. And if you were in an 18 speed, seven and eight would be down into the uh, center and down. But in a 12 speed like this diagram is, you only use three positions. 18 speed, you'd use four positions. And then you would hit your range button to shift over to this set of diagrams. And we would have seven and eight in our up uh, left up position, eight and uh, nine and ten all the way to the left and down, eleven and twelve would be in the center position all the way up. So that's the difference in the three sets of diagrams. If you played Euro Truck, you're used to all this, and you're going, Moose, I already know this. Well, blah blah blah. Why are you telling me all this? Because it gets a little more complicated as we get into some of the other things in the game some subtle changes they made in the game that not a whole lot of people know about. So once we select what eight shifter and pattern we want to use, we can hit the finish wizard and we can be done with all that stuff. It brings us into controls. It'll show us uh, where everything is at. If you don't want to use the wizard, you can come in and set all this stuff up manually. You'll see that you have keyboard, Logitech, G27, USB up there. It'll tell you a wheel, eight shifter, steering sensitivity, I haven't messed with any of the sensitivity settings because in this game, default seems really, really good for me. In ETS, I messed with all of this stuff. I had it all tweaked out to make everything, make the wheel feel like a wheel in a real vehicle. And for me, the default settings are pretty darn good right now. I haven't gone around and messed with it uh, because I found that the wheel works really well as is. So steering sensitivity, some people will turn it up to make it more sensitive. And uh, for me, I like it uh, right where it's at in the default setting. Steering non-linearity, that has to do with if you're using a controller, like a gamepad, um, that can change your steering to only be left and right and to eliminate the travel up and down from, the, um, from being registered at all. You have your force feedback settings here. Again, mine are straight at default. I haven't changed anything on it. If I wanted more force feedback, I could turn up the gain. Uh, if I wanted more the wheel to be a little bit stiffer, I can turn that up. Uh, if I want this, the wheel to come back to center position uh, a little bit faster than they are default in the game, you can crank that up or maybe it's too fast, you wanna slow it down. Right speeds it up, left slows it down engine terrain dampeners collision again you can adjust these however you want them for you i like the default setting it's working for me uh then down here you have your steering axis you can adjust the dead zone if you want to if uh you want it to you want to be able to turn it a little bit before it actually starts to register uh, you can increase the dead zone or decrease it all the way off if you want it to uh, you know steer as soon as you move it uh, some people like a little dead zone. I don't, so I like mine completely off. Uh, 
Uh, acceleration, pe uh, brake, and clutch. I do put a little bit of that in there, but by default it gives you a little bit anyways. So uh, you really don't have to adjust that. If you step on your pedals, you'll see the little orange bar move and you can make sure that they're all working. And that's that. Okay, so down here at the eight shifter setup, there's one more thing that we need to set up. And I'm gonna switch this back to simple. One more thing that we have to set up and that is our shift toggles. It will already register all your different positions for you. If it didn't, you can come in here and set your position one by clicking on it and then putting your gear shifter in position one. Um, but it should set all that up to default for you for the G27. Uh, the one thing though it does for you, you may want to move these buttons around a little bit. Shifter toggle one and shifter toggle two. That is your range and your splitter buttons. Uh, shifter toggle one is range, shifter toggle two is the splitter. Now by default it puts it to joy button zero. Uh, if you're looking at your center console, the button that is is the red button furthest to the left. And then the numbers are zero, one, two, three, going from left to right on those. So zero is furthest to the left. And then joy button one is to the button just to the right of uh, zero, obviously, duh. Um, you can set those up to whatever buttons you want. You might want to use the little black diamonds at the top, buttons at the top of the screen. Uh, it's up to you where you want to put those. Some people put it on the steering wheel because they like to have that toggle button there. Me personally, I change it over to joy button uh, two and three. I put my range on button two and I put my, uh, t uh, my splitter on joy button three. So button three is on the center. It's the red button furthest to the right. And, uh, and joy button two is the one just to the left of that. So that's the way I've got mine set up. You can set it up different. Automatic gearbox drive reverse. That's if you're using the automatic transmission. Uh, if you want to do that, there's really no need in even having an H shifter. So anyway, so that covers the basics of that. If you want to further set up your G27, we can go ahead and we can assign buttons to all the different buttons on our keyboard, uh, on our, on our, uh, G27. So like on your steering wheel, you've got your six buttons on there that you can do as well as your floppy paddles so on your floppy paddles for me like i have my turn signal set to my floppy paddle and again all i have to do is go down to left turn indicator click on it one time then click on my left floppy paddle and that gives me my left turn signal there right turn signal is on my right floppy panel uh, again so go through here and assign buttons in however you want to use them um, there's nothing really major in here for you. Cruise control, I have on my hat switch, which is the, you know, the D-pad. Uh, I have that so I can adjust up and down on my cruise control. Uh, you can do that as you want. You can assign the buttons however you want to. The only other button that I, the only real thing that you should do also with your uh, cruise control, now that I'm thinking about it, is come in here and adjust your cruise control grid step. If you're going to use cruise control, which uh, with the speeding the way it is in the game, you're going to want to use cruise control a lot. If you want it to adjust, like if you're using cruise increase or decrease, uh, you can set how much you can increase it or decrease it by coming here. Uh, I've got mine set up to one mile per hour per click. So that way if I set it at 54 miles an hour and I want to go 56, I can click my D-pad two times and it you know, pulls it up a little bit for me. So that's the basics of getting the G27 up. At this point, it's working, it's functioning for you. If we go into the truck and hit drive, we're set up on an uh, 18 speed with this particular truck. I'm set up range and splitter for my, my gear shift. So if I bring my gear shift all the way to the left and up, you'll see I'm in gear one. Down is gear three. Five is in the center position and up. 7 is in the center position and down. If I want to go from 1st to 2nd, I put it in 1st gear. And then I hit my splitter button. That gives me 2nd gear. To go to 3rd, I hit the splitter button. Pull my shift lever all the way down. I'm in 3rd. To go to 4th, I hit the splitter button. So you can see how you shift with that. If I need to go to 8th, uh, uh, ninth gear, I come all the way over with what would be 1st gear. 
and I hit my range button, that pops me up into 11th gear. Did I say 9th? I'm in 11th. So, um, and so forth and so on. And that's the way you shift the gears uh, in the transmission. That is set up. So that's the basics of the G27. Now I had to set up. Now, we're going to go into a little bit more advanced gear uh, shifting and gearbox setup. Because one thing that is new with American Truck Sim that did not exist in ATS is the ability to what is called float gears or what is um, referred to a lot as what is um, RPM matching. The game allows you to actually float gears now uh, and you weren't able to do that in ATS. To shift gears in ATS and the way I've got everything set up right now, you physically have to push the clutch in every time you want to go from one gear to the next gear. Well, now in Euro Truck, you can float. And by floating, that means I never push the clutch in. All I do is move the gear shifter, and it goes from gear to gear. But there's a trick to it, and it's a little bit of a, you know, it's a little frustrating sometimes learning it. Um, but once you master it, it's pretty fun. Uh, I've yet to master it, but I've got it set up to where I can pretty much have a good time with it to switch it over so you can float gears you've got to come to shifter layout behavior by default you're in simple simple is just your standard shifting where every time you change gears you have to push the clutch in but if you come in here and you go to advanced advanced is now going to change the transmission to be dynamic and it's going to let you every time you move the gear shifter and such it's going to change how it reacts. So now that I've changed that, when we go into the truck to shift gears, things are going to be a little bit different. To get into a gear from neutral, I have to push the clutch in and get it, you know, get me rolling. But then to shift gears, once I do that, if I let my clutch out, now well, I stop the gear. If I let the clutch out and go into neutral and then I try to go into any other gear position, I get a sound effect of gears grinding. So I have no clutch pushed in and it sounds like my gears are grinding because now I have a dynamic gearbox. This is cool because this now lets me shift gears and change gears without using a clutch. Now to do that, what you have to do is RPM match. And it's taken me a while to figure it out, but basically the RPM match is um, if you're going from one gear to the next gear, a full step of a gear, so if I'm going from uh, first gear to third gear, there's a 500 RPM drop. If I'm going from second gear to third gear, which I consider that a half of a step, if I go from a half step, it's only a 250 gear drop. Or RPM drop so what do I mean by that if we put ourselves into first gear and we go for a little ride here I'm gonna set myself into first gear and we're gonna pull out and I'm gonna use the clutch to shift until we get out so you can actually while steering around here you can't see my uh, RPMs so we're going to be watching the tachometer when we're running this, and I'll show you how this is done. We'll let traffic pass a little bit. And again, I preface this by saying I am not the greatest at this. I'm still learning it and still getting used to it, so I do make mistakes with it. Again, if you miss a gear, you get that grinding sound. All right. So we're in third. If I want to go to what is fifth now, I'm just going to let off the gas and shift. And I'll have to watch my tachometer drop 500 RPMs. So if I shift at 2,000 RPMs, I want to shift into fifth gear when the tachometer is down around 1,500. So if I go up to 2,000, I let off the gas, I pop in, and it didn't take it. get on a different road and we can try this of 
grind those gears, right? There's always somebody going to say that. Alright, so we'll sit here and now we can actually get going. Alright, so we're in fifth. I'm going to slow up here and get back down into third. And so I'm doing a full jump by going from third to fifth. So I go up to 2,000 RPMs. I let off. I put in, you hear a little bit of grind, but then it caught the gear and jumped into it. And you're going to do that probably a bit until you find out where the sweet spot is to get into it. But again, I'm not using the clutch at all. I'm just shifting. So again, I get 2,000 RPMs. I'm just going to let off the gas and move in and it shifts gears without even using the clutch. That's called floating the gears. So you can go up and down no matter what transition you're making. Again, if you're making a full jump, which is you're moving the gear shifter, you're going to go 500 RPMs up or down. And if you're doing a half drop, where if I'm using the splitter to go from 9th to 10th, all I got to do is press my, shit, my splitter button and let off on my gas pedal and it'll make that jump for me automatically. But if I want to make a half a step from like 10 to 11, the drop is only 250 RPMs. Oh, I missed it. So, well, I also had to hit the splitter and I forgot to hit the splitter. But anyways, that's the basics of it. I just wanted to talk about that a little bit because I don't think a lot of people know that you can do that in the game. It's going to take a lot of practice to get used to it. Like I said, I am nowhere near being proficient enough with it to to uh, pull it off every time. And uh, I just figured out where the ranges were and how it functioned. It took me a while to figure it out. Uh, some other people may be saying, well, I already knew all that. Well, good, I didn't. So it took me a little bit of time to figure it out. Last thing I want to cover with setting up your transmission, your gearbox, is the Eaton Fuller transmission. A lot of people don't know anything about this either, uh, but you'll see it in their shift layout behavior. One of the pro most prominent transmissions in the United States in trucking is the Eaton Fuller transmission. The Eaton Fuller transmission is unlike anything you ever drove if you played Euro Truck. The shift pattern in it is completely different and will confuse you and mess you up in a heartbeat. The Eaton Fuller puts reverse in what is normally your first position. And anybody who's ever driven truck uh, in the United States uh, is a happy camper having an Eaton Fuller in this game because... They're always used to going all the way over to the left and up for first gear. And like if you're trailering, it's really easy for you to go all the way up into reverse and then just move straight down to be into a forward gear and walk it forward a little bit. So if you want to use the Eaton Fuller setup, you'll select either your Eaton Fuller 10, 13, or 18 speed. When I do that, my shift pattern changes completely. Now I only have... My all the way to the left and up is where my reverse gear is. So you'll see that my my gear has changed to reverse 2H. If I move that to uh, R1L, that's my low side of it. If I come in and I move all the way to the left and down, I have LL, which is a low low or what is known as a granny gear. Then when I go to the middle and up, that is first gear, and that is L next to it means first gear low. Middle and down is second gear low. All the way to the right and up is third gear low, and then all the way to the right and down is fourth gear. Now, in Euro Truck, you had gears 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, right? And in an 18 speed gearbox in here, you've got, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, if you're in the 13 speed, you've got one, two, three, four. And then you have your high range and your low range on there. And 
That's where I get a little confused sometimes with range and splitter. Because basically, the split is low and high. So you have first gear, low, and then if you hit your splitter, you go to first gear, high. And then when you go down to second gear, you have second gear, low, second gear, high. So it's the same thing as your gears that you had before, whereas uh, in the standard gear that you're used to from Euro Truck or, or in the standard range or splitter format, you're, you had one and two. Well, basically one and one high are the same thing. Um, so one low is basically one, and your second gear is one high. Uh, it's a little confusing. If you think of it, though, as down into the you, your down position in second gear is second gear. It's two gears. It's second low, second high. So as you shift, you go one low, one high, two low, two high, three low, three high. And then when you get down to fourth and you go to four high, then you hit your range and your splitter button and you come up. Back to the center up position, you're in 5 low, 5 high, 6 low, 6 high, and then you have 7 low, 7 high, and then all the way to the right and down is 8 low, 8 high. Uh, and in the high range position, you also have low high. So, uh, it's a little, it's going to take you a little time to get used to that, if that's somewhere you want to go, but that is what the Eaton Fuller is. It moves the reverse gear all the way over into the left, uh, all the way to the left and up. That's where your reverse gears is. If you do a Google search for Eaton Fuller, you can get a picture of the shift diagram. Uh, it might make a little more sense to you. Um, but yeah, having that, that's pretty much the standard. I love having that as part of the game now, and uh, it makes shifting and running a lot different. Um, my shifting pattern that I usually run right now with as light as the loads are um, in mine, I typically will shift out. Um, I will start off in first gear. I'll usually run one low, two low, three low, four low. Then I'll do my range up to five low. Then once I get into those higher gears, I'll start using the high side of those. So I'll go five high. Then I'll run six low, six high, seven low, seven high, eight low, eight high. Um, I usually, when I'm in the basement uh, or on the low range side of it, I will usually just jump full steps. So I go from one to two to three to four, and then I do the half steps on the high range. So anyways, that's the basics of it. That's how you get your G20 set up. I hope that helps you guys out who have had questions about it. And um, again, throw it into advanced settings every once in a while and, and give it a try. Uh, the floating of gears is pretty fun. It changes the game around immensely. And uh, being able to actually float a gear is pretty crazy in here. See if I can float one here. And again, if you get that little bit of a grind, I hate my gearbox. The one thing I hate about the G27 gearbox is going into that fourth position or all the way right and down because the reverse gear is there. It tends to hang up a little bit, and that uh, that really annoys me. So again, when I'm floating gears, I get that little bit of a grind sound just because I'm trying to go in a little bit too early with it. And uh, But in, in the advanced mode, again, if you want to take a half step, all you have to do is push the button, let off the gas, and it will take that next step from low to high. For me to go from low to high, all I have to do is push the button, let off the gas, and then get back on the gas, and it makes the shift. And again, for a half step to sixth, I'm going to hit my button, let it fall 250 RPMs, and shift into sixth position. So, and I missed the shift. Oh well. 
see if I can get on a different street here and make that happen. Let's do this. Five low. Alright. So we go to five high. And I'm going to want to shift down to sixth. Push my button. And miss it. There we go. Again, guys, I'm working. It's a work in progress for me. And uh, if you miss it, you can always rev up the motor a little bit and then get it in. So, uh, anyways, there's the basics for you guys. Hope that's informative for you. And I uh, hope you had a good laugh at me trying to float gears. Um, but I thought I'd pass that information along because I don't think a lot of people know you can do it in the game yet. So, uh, anyways, that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll have some uh, a lot of ATS coming towards you guys. I'll start doing mod reviews this week as I find mods that are really cool. I don't intend to put very, very many mods in my game, but I will uh, do some video spotlights for you guys uh, who are wanting to know about the mods that are out there. But uh, for now, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you like it. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do, and I'll see you in our next video. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good day. Bye-bye.